In a frozen cave buried beneath layers of time, scientists discovered something they weren't supposed to find. A single strand of ancient DNA, perfectly preserved in silence. Not from a mammoth, not from a predator, but from a human, a caveman, untouched for tens of thousands of years. As they sequenced the genome, they weren't just looking at genes. They were unlocking a time capsule. Every code, every protein, was a whisper from the past. A story of survival, instinct, and unexpected habits. What they uncovered didn't just rewrite textbooks. It shattered them. Forget what you thought you knew about cavemen. They weren't mindless brutes wielding clubs and grunting at fire. The DNA tells a different story, a story of complex behavior, daily rituals, and even primitive medicine. Footprints frozen in ash, tools carved with surgical precision, bones marked not by hunting, but by healing. What if they were smarter than we ever imagined? What if their daily life resembled ours more than we're willing to admit? From hunting patterns to diet, sleep cycles to social structures, this is not prehistory as you've heard it. This is prehistory decoded by DNA. So, what did the cavemen really do every day? And how could their routines change how we see the human species? For centuries, the image of the caveman was built on assumptions, crude drawings on cave walls, scattered bones, and primitive tools. Most of what we believed came from fragments. But in 2023, a breakthrough changed everything. Deep inside the El Cidron cave in northern Spain, researchers uncovered the remains of a Neanderthal family. Not just bones, but hair, muscle tissue, and, remarkably, viable DNA. These Neanderthals lived over 49,000 years ago, long before modern civilization, agriculture, or even organized religion. Yet the genome told a story of adaptation, care, and astonishing complexity. Across Europe and Asia, dozens of similar sites began yielding genetic material. From the Denisova cave in Siberia to the Vindija cave in Croatia. Each sequence brought new revelations. Some showed signs of interbreeding with Homo sapiens. Others contained markers for immunity, lactose intolerance, and even emotional regulation. The question grew louder. If their DNA is so close to ours, what else did they share? Did they laugh, cook, mourn their dead? Were their days ruled by instinct or by ritual? With every excavation, the line between them and us grew thinner. The mystery was no longer just about who they were, but how they lived, moment by moment. It began with a tooth, not a fossilized remnant, but a molar still containing trace amounts of pulp, preserved in the dry, oxygen-deprived depths of Shanidar Cave in Iraq. For decades, Archaeologists had debated the significance of this site. It was once thought to be a simple Neanderthal burial ground. But when researchers extracted DNA from that single tooth, the story changed forever. Within its spiral helix were clues not just about the individual's lineage, but about his lifestyle. Embedded in the calculus, the hardened plaque, were microscopic traces of cooked starches wild legumes, and even medicinal plants like yarrow and chamomile. He hadn't just chewed roots. He had selected them. That meant knowledge, memory, intention. Then came another shock, residues of smoke and burnt bone. He had been near fire, often. Some scientists argued this wasn't accidental. It suggested routine cooking, maybe even shared meals. But the real revelation came when fragments of his genome were cross-referenced with other cave samples from distant regions. Patterns emerged. The same plants. The same fire traces. The same microbial signatures in their mouths. It wasn't random. It was daily life. Structured. Repeated. And passed down. 
the first threads of a long-lost routine were starting to weave themselves into a bigger picture, one encoded not in tools or artifacts, but in the biology of survival. The investigation quickly escalated into one of the most ambitious genetic reconstructions in archaeological history. Led by a team from the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology, researchers developed ultra-sensitive techniques to extract and sequence ancient DNA from even the most degraded samples. Every cave became a laboratory. Every speck of dirt, a potential revelation. But this wasn't just about sequencing. It was about context. Using stable isotope analysis, scientists determined what these ancient humans ate season by season. With dental microware analysis, they tracked how often their diet shifted between raw and cooked food. It was meticulous, slow work. Every fragment examined under electron microscopes. Every genome cross-referenced with modern and ancient humans alike. But obstacles loomed. Contamination from modern DNA was a constant threat. Even a single cough could destroy weeks of work. Teams had to wear full-body suits, operate in clean rooms, and reconstruct sequences base by base. Meanwhile, paleoanthropologists examined the spatial distribution of artifacts within caves, noting wear marks on tools, ash layers, and the orientation of bones. What emerged wasn't just data, it was behavior, patterns of repetition, placement that hinted at purpose, sleeping areas, communal spaces, zones for tool making. It all pointed to one conclusion. The cave wasn't just a shelter, it was a home, a place of rhythm, of daily life lived in complexity. But to truly understand how they lived, the team needed one more thing proof locked in the very code of their being. The breakthrough came from a single strand of mitochondrial DNA, extracted from the femur of a Neanderthal child found in the Vindija cave in Croatia. Unlike nuclear DNA, which recombines and changes, mitochondrial DNA passes almost unchanged from mother to child, making it a perfect time capsule. What the researchers found was astonishing. Genetic markers not only for physical traits, but for metabolic rhythms, sleep cycles, and even stress response. Embedded in the genome were circadian indicators, evidence that these ancient humans followed a structured day-night routine. Genes controlling melatonin regulation suggested they slept in cycles aligned with lunar phases, not just daylight. But it went deeper. Traces of gut bacteria preserved in the intestinal region revealed a diet far more diverse than anyone expected. Berries, roasted seeds, smoked meat, even honey. DNA from parasites and medicinal herbs hinted at self-treatment, possibly even primitive hygiene rituals. One individual showed genetic adaptation for metabolizing fermented foods, raising the possibility of early fermentation techniques. Then came the most controversial finding. FOXP2 gene variants nearly identical to modern humans. This gene is crucial for speech. Combined with the presence of symbolic artifacts, carved bones, red ochre, and geometric patterns, it supported a radical theory. Neanderthals didn't just grunt. They spoke, shared knowledge, taught skills. Their daily life wasn't chaotic survival. It was organized, habitual, and deeply human. The genome had spoken, and it told a story far more complex than anyone had dared to imagine. Dawn breaks over a limestone cliff. A soft orange glow filters into the cave's entrance, casting long shadows over smoothed stones and scattered bones. Inside, the fire is already smoldering. Embers pulse beneath a layer of ash, tended carefully overnight. A woman stirs a mixture of crushed roots and heated water in a shallow stone bowl. Behind her, a child watches, mimicking every move. This isn't just survival, it's teaching. A man returns from a nearby river, hands coated with wet clay used to patch a broken wall. 
Beside him lies a rack of drying fish, strung and smoked with a precision passed down for generations. On the floor, a sleeping area is marked by a circle of animal skins, arranged not randomly, but with deliberate care. Another elder sits near the fire, sharpening a tool with rhythmic strokes, while others sort through a pile of stones, choosing only those of a specific type and weight. There's laughter, not loud, but unmistakable. And in a carved recess on the cave wall, symbols are painted, simple, geometric, but patterned. Ritual, meaning, memory. These people weren't wandering nomads. They were part of something bigger, a culture, a system. Every action, from cooking to crafting, followed rules, repetition, routine. A life structured by necessity, yes, but also by memory and intention. This was not the chaos of the wild. This was the birth of civilization, etched in DNA and stone. What began as fragments, bones, ashes, teeth, has now transformed into a living portrait of our ancient relatives. Cavemen were never just shadows in prehistory. They were thinkers, healers, builders, and teachers. They lived in rhythm with the earth and with each other, guided by knowledge passed hand to hand, fire to fire. And their routines? They weren't mindless survival tactics. They were choices, refined through generations, encoded into DNA, and echoed still in the way we live today. Every time we cook a meal, tell a story, care for a wound, or teach a child, we're tracing the same neural paths that once lit up in caves under the stars. These ancient people weren't a separate species of savage beings. They were us, and with every genome sequenced, every cave mapped, and every ritual uncovered, we step closer to understanding not just where we come from, but who we truly are. The past isn't distant. It's alive in our blood, our bones, and our breath. So next time you look into the mirror, remember, part of you once lived in the firelight of a cave, spoke in a forgotten tongue, and passed wisdom down through silence and gesture. If this kind of discovery fascinates you, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and dive into more revelations waiting in the deep timeline of human history. Because here, the future begins with the past.